I am generally known as fairly slapdash. My mum would describe me as someone who gets things done, but isn't too worried about it being perfect. And that I'd rather have some fun along the way than achieve perfection. Two common themes in my boarding school reports were about the messiness of my room and that I needed to take more time and care over my homework. However, there is one thing that I have become fairly compulsive about. For the past six months or so, I've been working at a desk in my bedroom next to a window which has a blind on it. For some reason, when Sam opens the blind, he never quite fully opens it. And so I compulsively pull it up the last few inches to let in some extra light. Then whenever I sit down to work, I also move the mirror that sits on the window ledge onto our bed so that even more light can get in. I'm one of those people that feels it as the days get darker and shorter. I don't know if there's people that don't feel it, but I know that there's a lot of us that do. And every other year up until now, I've just felt sorry for myself as the days get shorter and darker. At uni, I self-diagnosed myself with SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. I doubt that I actually have it, but I like the idea of maybe one day being prescribed by the doctor a, a lamp that shines on me throughout the winter. But this year, I realised how widespread this sense of dread is and how many other people feel more tired and low as this season approaches. It made me all the more determined to pull the blinds all the way up and to move anything that blocks out sunlight from coming into our room. But it also made me realise that, like Sam, some people forget to pull their blinds up or don't even realise the extra light would help. I wonder whether we could turn our thinking around. Rather than feeling sorry for ourselves as we move towards winter, might we prepare ourselves for a time of year where there are so many opportunities to bless others? Darkness means that light is all the more noticeable. Ian Keith Falconer famously said, I have but one candle to burn and I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with light. As we go into this winter, with people potentially more isolated and closed in than normal, how can we bring light and warmth into their lives? How might we share our light, but also remind each other that there is a light shining on them if they'll just pull up the blinds and let it in? These two questions reminded me of two Bible passages, and I'm going to read them. Then I wonder if you might take them and read them through a few times. Treat them as a boiled sweet in your mouth. Roll the words around, savour them, reflect on them. Pay attention to what they bring up, how they make you feel, what they prompt you to do, and get in touch with whoever God puts on your mind as you're reading them. Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And John 8 verse 12. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Father, we pray that we would allow your light into our lives, that we wouldn't get dragged down by the surrounding um, seasons, but that we would be a light in that for the people around us. Father, use us, shine your light through us. Give us joy and peace and a light that lights up our lives and lights up the lives of those that we come into contact with. Amen.